Drew McIntyre travels all over the world, but when you do that, you don't have to miss your favorite shows. And you can travel anonymously and virtually with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Change your virtual location with just one click. Get that great threat protection that blocks malware, annoying pop-up ads, and online trackers. And on top of that, you can get some services overseas that are much more affordable than what we have here in the States. You're going to end up saving money by using NordVPN.com slash Fightful, and they still have their great deal, plus an additional 30 days free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. I was able to recently up my PlayStation Network speeds as a result of this, as I had a dynamic IP. PlayStation Network didn't quite like it. Got on my router, because it's available on all your devices, is nordvpn.com slash Fightful. Applied uh, that new IP, and poof, my speeds were a little bit better. nordvpn.com slash Fightful. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful here with a name you know. We're at the Boys and Girls Club of Southern Nevada. First time interview. You you never do these. No, I'm very nervous. This is my first time representing the company in any capacity. And, you know, doing an interview so go easy on me with the questions. I know you throw those hard balls out there sometimes. It is yes. about fun. It's yes. about fun. It's not about the dirt. The dirt. <laughs> it's actually all about the dirt. Montez buried the dirt sheets last night on the show. He did? Yeah. Well, him and, him and Angelo. That's what gets me through the weeks, reading the headlines, especially oh, the ones about man. myself. I love when they're, like, not true, but people might believe them and they make it look good. But also at the same time, the negative ones, I'm like, man, I hope they don't believe that. And then the ones that aren't true, I go, God, I hope they believe that. <laughs> what do you want the headline of this to be? I mean, I'd make up something silly and totally put myself over, but just in the spur of the occasion, um, I'd say, like, uh, we did something cool today. You did. You're, we're at the Boys and Girls Club of Southern Nevada, uh, a, a Special Olympics event. I mean, I know you do a lot of these. You spent your birthday doing one of these, and I know it means a lot to you. Yeah, yeah, it does. I know I've said this before. I'll say it every time I'm asked. You know, growing up, I always wanted to be in the ring, winning the championships. It means so much to me what I do on television as Drew McIntyre. But, you know, being the whole fired thing and getting perspective and being a little bit older and wiser these days, it's the stuff outside the ring where you make the real difference. It's the most important to me. And even though we technically have money in the bank tonight and I freaking hate ladders, I freaking hate heights, and I sh should be getting fully prepared, I see this as part of my preparation. And I love getting up early and um, hanging out with everybody here. It's all about inclusion through sports. It's all about fun. You know, the Boys and Girls Club, Nevada, Special Olympics, unified together and allowing WWE to come and hang out is very, very cool. And uh, we had talked off air. You've moved to Nashville. SummerSlam's in Nashville. It is. So it's a bit of a, a, it's a bit of a home field advantage for you. What drew you to Nashville? Uh, well, that nemesis slash friend slash nemesis of mine, Seamus, has been living there for years. He's been prodding away at me. You know, you got to move here. You know, it's a change of pace. We lived in Florida for over 10 years. Um, it's, you know, got the, the forest, the greenery. It kind of has similarities to Ireland and Scotland. And also my wife's from West Virginia, so he kept kind of prodding at her once I said, I don't want to move, it's too annoying to move. And then finally, she got the final vote. We moved. I love it. Everyone's so friendly. It is a nice change of pace. It does remind me of Scotland. We're off away in the kind of countryside, so I enjoy it a lot. It's good to have that separation with how busy I am with my professional life and now being away from the thick of it in Florida and St. Petersburg, you know, in my personal life is very quiet now. That's cool. Now, I know a lot of people think that Europe is the size of a shopping mall, but they are going to the UK for Clash of the Castle. Not quite... <laughs> Not I mean, the technically, you could fit the UK, the whole of the UK, into Texas three times, yeah. like one state. But you look at our history, especially Scotland's history, with very cool history with some very cool people. And just Google Scotland and the things you know we've event invented and the people have achieved from there. You know, five million people yeah. have done a lot for this world throughout history. So a lot of people are like, another home field advantage for, for you, but it's, it's a little bit of a trip from where you grew up. But what's your, what's your dream match for Clash of the Castle? Because this is a big thing that we'd be going back for UK pay-per-view. I mean, I hope I'm on the card for one. <laughs> you can never assume anything in WWE. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I want to make sure I'm on the show. But, you know, I have petitioned for this for a long time. I appreciate people that give me some of the credit for making it happen. I always say it's a team effort. It is a team effort at WWE. Uh, just because I wouldn't shut up about it and said it's going to be a big deal. And it is going to be a big deal. You've seen the, the pre-sales. You've seen the actual sales of the tickets. The UK's rabid for WWE, for wrestling in general. I'm so excited about this show. And if I had to pick my dream match, obviously I'm going to go for the title match. You know, okay. old, old Drew McIntyre is the only person in history that's main event WrestleMania childhood dream. Won the world title WrestleMania childhood dream. Beat Brock, cherry on top. Oh yeah, there was nobody there. 
I mean, two out of three ain't bad. It was necessary for the times. We're very proud of it. Two-time WWE champion, zero fans for the first time in front of fans. I'd like to, you know, hold up the title. It'd be very cool to do it in the UK. For the sake of Wikipedia, do you remember what day you actually won the title? Because it was filmed at some point. But Wikipedia says like March. 18th or 19th or something like that. I don't remember which it was, but they don't even know. Yeah, I mean, if you look at my recent Drew McIntyre's history, um, <laughs> a TikTok WWE put out a video where they asked me about my own history and I didn't know anything about okay, myself. Fair. So I have fair. a very bad memory comes to Drew McIntyre. Like I'm a wrestling historian for anything prior to me getting signed, but we did film it around a week prior. And um, as I mentioned a million times, you know, you never know what to expect in WWE. You can't just assume things are going to go the way they're planned or the way you've actually filmed them. So even yeah. though I technically had won that match and I was doing media leading up to Mania, talking like I hadn't won the title yet because in my mind, I was like, this could change. We, we could have to go back in, redo yeah. it. I made the joke slash half serious of, what if they edited it together? They're such great editors. It could be Brock hitting an F5 and one, two, and it cuts to like Seth or Roman, someone with dark hair getting pinned by Brock three, and it's just a close up of Brock holding the title up. I didn't know for sure. Yeah. I watched it with the world on the couch with the wife and the cast. That was really cool. And to see, you know, my, my hand getting raised, the referee giving me the title on TV, and then at home for my wife is such an important part of my journey to hand me the title at home was also very cool and very um, special to us. Last question Is there any music artist that people would be surprised that you like? I like everybody. Like everything. Like you a Doja Cat fan? I've saw her live. I'd never heard did of. You, you have? Yeah, I did the uh, Global Citizens event in Paris where I got to speak about uh, climate change. That's again cool things we get to do as part of WWE. Yeah. I was part of this huge event. Elton John. I used to say Elton John opened for me. You know, he was the opening act. I said to my wife, I was like, Oh my God, Elton John's on before me. I'm going to follow that. He went, he's open. She's, my wife said he's opening for you. Know, Damn right, I'm the main event. <laughs> so we were watching the bands afterwards. We got to see some uh, Moniskin for the first time. Who I got to present the MTV Europe Award That's for cool. Best Rock Band, which was cool. And I saw Doja Cat for the. First she did time. the metal performance. Was that the metal performance night uh, where she did where they they had it a little bit more. I, mean, I, I think it was the difference. So. It was the first time I saw her, yeah. but I watched. I just watched the crowd because I sure. never heard. I was. I thought it was a guitar player. Like I was. Oh, the guy came out with a guitar. And went, oh, is that the Doja Cat? That is oh, legitimately I, my favorite Doja Cat performance of all time, and you saw it live. Well, she, when she oh, appeared really? with all the gang, I went, "Oh my god!" Oh, and, I, really? and I was watching the crowd the whole time. She had everybody in the palm of her hands. Like she was working them like crazy. It's like so funny the similarities of wrestling and entertainers in all fields. Like she's such an entertainer, such an incredible performance. And yeah, I'm a fan of her now. But I have a Spotify here. So okay. <laughs> What's on this? It would be horrifying with some of this stuff. Okay. We got some Oasis, we got some Johnny Cash, some Manson, right. some Elton John. Elton John. Uh, which apparently was my most listened to artist last yeah. year. Renee Young. Dumb and Dumber soundtrack. Renee Young. Big <laughs> yeah. shout out for Renee in the podcast. Uh, ACDC. Okay. Melissa Etheridge. Slipknot. Melissa Not. Etheridge. <laughs> the Proclaimers. Scottish. Slipknot. Roy Orbison. Marshall Mathers. Creed. All right. Uh, so you're, you're diversified, but I'm so diversified. We're listening to Avril Lavigne on the way here. <laughs> there you go. You heard it Did here it first. <laughs> Noted Avril Lavigne and Doja Cat enthusiast Drew McIntyre. Thank you so much. Thank you, buddy. Till next time. We're out. Gonna go jump off ladders now.